Let's see what this is about then. Greetings, I'm Shad. I'm a historical weapons and armor enthusiast as well as a practitioner of historical swordsmanship, specifically medieval European swordsmanship. With that foundation of knowledge, I want to take a look at the weapons from Monster Hunter to see how effective they would be. Now, I understand this is a fantasy <laughs> setting, okay? And usually when I have a look at fantasy kind of weapons, I do a bit of both. I look at how practical they would be in the real world if you're just a regular person, but I always like to, of course, try and make the concession that, all right, how effective would they be in their own setting with the uh, kind Oops. of concession that you could actually use them. Say you have the strength to use them and that their weight distribution seems to be somewhat similar or the weight distribution is uh, in such a state that would reflect the way in which they are used because a lot of these weapons, especially like the greatsword that we're going to be looking at, uh, if you held it out like that in front of you, you would simply tip over. It doesn't matter how strong you would be, okay? If you do not weigh uh, like as much or more than this greatsword, the point of balance between you and the greatsword would go past your feet, which is just make you tip over like you could lift it up <laughs> like that and it could be wider that's what you get human strength great sword mains your weight is simply not enough that's what you get out, you're gonna tip over that, that, that's the reality with this image in particular it's interesting because you see how far his foot is forward that is kind of indicating that there's a lot of forward weight perhaps not as much as the weight of his own body but in reality if you had a weapon like this like i don't know how dense these bones are but if we're comparing them somewhat to the same area around steel but having said that that could be why they make them out of bone because they're lighter. I don't actually know, but that could be an interesting kind of world building thing that these bones are as strong or stronger than metal, like steel, iron, but they're lighter, which means that they could get away with making them much, much bigger. That's kind of- Great I, sword cool armor comes with counterweights like in the back. But uh, we're not really gonna be going into that too much. We're going to pretend they are the weight that it's kind of reflected in how they're used. And so you can hold them out like that and not tip over, which actually means that it wouldn't nearly be as heavy as what it should be for its size, density, and the kind of ballpark figure we could estimate what material you know, weight it would have. And so with those concessions made, are these the type of weapons you would want to use to fight giant monsters? Like, you know, dragons, dinosaurs, things, all that fun stuff in Monster Hunter. And we're just gonna go through each weapon a bit. I'm gonna share some of my thoughts, drawing from the foundational understanding I have in medieval combat, how weapons work and all those things. So, well, we kind of started with the greatsword already. Let's dive right into that. The greatsword we're specifically looking at right now is called the Great Wyvern Jawblade. And it's a more iconic kind of greatsword in the Monster Hunter franchise that appears in multiple games. And this one, as you can see, is actually made out of the jaw of a wyvern where you can see the teeth marks and they've separated and just sharpened up one edge and attached a handle to it and interestingly in some cases or in some games the handle actually retracts into the the bone a bit so you can carry it easier so this is <laughs> this is kind of one of the things i like about lots of hunter it's so over the top and ridiculous but we're just going with no. it right? like, okay let's pretend you can even no, it's not thing. and uh, and uh, like we're going that way this type of weapon Interestingly enough, would actually be quite effective against large creatures. Why? Well, it emphasizes one of the advantages that swords have, their cutting ratio. Now, a sword, you can cut on any part of the blade, you know, if it's sharp enough and all that stuff, all right? You can cut lower on the blade, you can cut higher on the blade. That's actually an advantage with swords specifically, because when you compare them to, say, against axes, the cutting ratio on an axe is a lot smaller, and if you miss the cut, you could hit on the shaft and bounce off and things. And so you have more options in which part of the blade you can actually strike with, but on top of that, you actually have higher chances of striking with the cutting portion of the blade, whereas other weapons, you could actually miss the cutting portion. But then on top of that, the monsters we're dealing with are so big that you can land a strike where the entire cutting ratio sinks into the target. Contrast that with like a sword on a person and you strike an arm, okay, even with the, a really long cutting ratio like a sword has, you're not technically going to be using that much of the blade unless you do a big long draw cut and slice through. And most cuts actually have some level of movement, so even if you don't do a big long draw cut, you could probably use, you know, up to this length of blade in the actual cut if it's sliced through an arm or something like that. But rarely do you use the entire cutting ratio of a sword against a person, but in a monster hunter setting, you these could. things are so yeah. big that you could sink the entire 
entire blade into a monster, like a whole thing, and that means the level of damage you can do potentially against these monsters uh, is far, far greater. Like the cut you could do against a giant, you know, like dragon or dinosaur T-Rex or something like that could be the whole length of the blade. And these blades are as long or longer than even a person standing up at times. And so that would leave a much larger cut, say in comparison to an axe. If you like swung an axe through, I don't know, the, uh, the ribs or something of a big giant monster, the overall cut and depth of the cut would be smaller in comparison to this huge sword. And so that actually Assuming gives a bit the, of an advantage the sword is sharp this enough. Crazy big Look at how sword. thick that Interesting thing is. Interesting thing that happens it's in Monster be a Hunter bitch World, to which is the second most recent Monster Hunter uh, franchise. There's a new one that's just right, like been released very recently, is that they, they do have a sweet spot on the great sword that when you strike with it, it does more damage. And it's not the tip, it's not the base, it's like it's actually very comparable to where the standard sweet spot is for a lot of swords, and it's right here. And just we'll show you with a graphic, uh, which I think is brilliant actually. That reflects something quite realistic with real swords because there is a sweet spot on real swords that when you strike with them you do more Dark Souls damage. has that sweet spot so the geometry spot well. of the sword really affects this because some swords can actually cut much more efficiently at the tip than other swords swords that are focused on thrusting and having a smaller tip with less mass there obviously cut less efficiently uh, but swords that are, have still a lot of meat at the tip can still cut quite well there but overall I give the grey sword a thumbs up and from my own time playing Monster Hunter the grey sword is kind of my favourite and I just want to say I really like the animation they didn't go to the full extent of how realistic it would be like if you swung that sword it would pull you with it and you'd just go flying but they do show the momentum carrying the user to some extent in the animations in Monster Hunter which I thought was brilliant where that's because the animations of Monster Hunter are amazing and you do a flip and you pull it over and you do another hit I, I just I thought that was brilliant and I loved it uh, so at the moment maybe it's a bit of bias because I always did favor the the great sword it is my favorite I should say as well by the way Monster Hunter great swords are not historical great swords. There is a historical great sword, which is some of the biggest combat used great swords in history. And these are things like the Zweihanda, Montante, Zweihanda, two-handed sword. Uh, and uh, these are a bit they're not different. You can see they have much more slender, thin blades. So because in the real world we are restricted to reality, physics, and the actual strength and weight a regular person has. So to make such big, when I say big, long swords practical, the blades of course are made very, very thin point of balance lower to the blade to keep them functional and usable and so I wouldn't really I caught to call these great swords in the sense that uh, they are really long they're, they're not the real historical they are very different to the Dude, real I hope he takes a dump all over long sword honorable mention to this great sword from Monster Hunter which has that, a rocket it's amazing the dude the wyvern ignition now, I've already talked a little bit about rocket propelled weapons but that was more in the context of hammers uh there's a video there on them so if you want to hear my thoughts check out that video uh because <laughs> oh, it's just so ridiculous and over the top uh, but funnily enough Maybe it could work. Check out the video. So the next weapon we'll look at in the Monster Hunter franchise is long the long sword, sword which yeah, good. is actually so also one of my favorite weapons. No, take a thing dump on it. Come on, Chad. Is that the proportions and lengths of this uh, long anonymous sword? Anonymous Gifter, thank you very much for making Xaco grossly the incandescent. Of Tip of the hat. Medieval history, depending on the design, because the long swords of Monster Hunter are actually based more off of the Nodachi or Odachi, yeah. that the or the Zanbato, the really giant Japanese. No, style it's not sword. MHK. It's now, too long. In some cases, I actually think the translation of uh, Nodachi translates to longsword. And so perhaps they're using the literal translation of that from Japanese to English. I don't know what they call it in the Japanese version. Maybe we'll bring it up or we'll, do, we'll find out. Yeah, but tell us uh, that editing it's crap. Come uh, on. But it's called the longsword, and maybe they're calling it the longsword because the medieval longsword is much smaller. <laughs> it's still two-handed, okay? It's the classic knightly two-handed sword. It's smaller than the great sword, but the length of the longsword in Monster Hunter is, like, actually longer than the great swords of medieval European history. And some, and there are variants of the longsword that actually have a, a cruciform, you know, shape. They're not the curved kind of Nodachi swords. They have a cross guard, double bladed. And they're, like I said, those ones, look, I would like, they're more in line with medieval great swords. But anyway, so all the benefits that I kind of talked about in regards to the great sword do kind of apply with the longsword from Monster Hunter, Interesting. But the in blade is too the thin. Sword 
does actually look to have a longer blade than the greatsword. The difference, like the big difference here, is weight. And so, and they show this in the game as well. The greatsword is a slow weapon, all right? Cumbersome, you have to do these big lineup swings and it throws your body around. The longsword is a little bit faster. It's kind of fast for one of the largest weapons, but not the fastest in the game. So they have that. And if we were to enter the Monster Hunter universe, and with the concessions in play, there are certain uh, physics results that should still apply. For instance, weight causing greater penetrating power. And that would be the difference between the Greatsword and the Longsword. The Greatsword has insane weight and just mass behind it. And yeah. so the momentum... The Longsword is going to get stuck. Power, that You're going to get like... Crazy. Uh, uh, uh. And that's what the Longsword would be lacking, okay? It would have less... So it's going to get stuck and it's going to break. Come on, let's be honest here. And so what would often happen, especially with these giant creatures, the longsword would hit and it wouldn't penetrate as deep. And what would happen is the blade would hit and then curve and then kind of slice on the edge and not penetrate it deeply, but you get these long kind of slicing cuts with it. And then the cutting ratio would still be very, very high because it could slice all along that really long blade. Wouldn't it fold? So it's wouldn't it break? We can sometimes get hung up, and I, I can do that as well, with the correct terms. Like a long sword is supposed to be this, but for as a descriptive term, this is a very long sword. It actually uh, applies to the design. It is like maybe you call it the really long sword or something. Um, but I think for just the descriptive name, it applies because as we kind of compare it to even the great sword, it seems to be a bit even longer than the great sword. But that's the pro and con there, yet it still gets a lot of advantages. There is another big advantage that the long sword would get. And remember, it's a disadvantage that not as deep a cut. That's why it's overpowered. It's just advantages, it advantages, advantages. Come on. And that is in penetration. All right. If you actually did a thrust, you could. And look how long this thing is. And so even with a big, you know, creature and stuff like that, if you got a really solid thrust all the way to the hilt, you could still reach some of these creatures' hearts. And that's a lethal, you know, penetrating thrust. And so that's its big advantage. In the Monster Hunter game itself, there's one thrusting animation, which I find a little odd, because to me, that is missing one of the most devastating uses that this weapon could have. And it is the thrusting capacity because it's so long and it's more pointed than the greatsword. This is the thing that a lot of people don't actually know. I addressed this in my video, How Deadly Were Swords in Real Life. Thrusts tend to be more deadly than cuts, especially cuts that are superficial, okay? You can get a cut across your whole chest, but if it doesn't penetrate the rib cage, you can survive that depending if you can fix the infection and blood loss. But if you can mitigate those things, a lot of cuts are surprisingly survivable. But thrusts, on the other hand, like thrusts, when I talk about head, neck, and uh, torso, where all your vital organs are, very dangerous. Thrusts on limbs and stuff, depending if you hit an artery or not, but if you miss an artery, thrusts on legs and arms are very survivable. But vital organs on the main body, thrusts are actually far more deadly than cuts. And this is why I think Monster Only Hunter I misses something so here, because this, again, I feel would be one of the Urkel great Core, thank you very much and advantages of for being this one sword. Thrusting months. into the heart or vital the organs of these Appreciate creatures support. should be thank you. crazy good. Yeah, I love now, dirty rats. There is the spirit blade ability that the longsword has, and that is where you finish a certain combo it powers up the cutting ability of the blade. That's kind of entering more magical territory, and I want to really more focus on the practical function that these swords would have against giant monsters if you could use them, when I say use them, wield them, spin, throw them around in the same way that they do in Monster Hunter, not necessarily whip out the magical abilities that uh, you can uh, summon with I'm the I'm more interested in, in whether itself. or not it would break. And so overall, I actually think the longsword is a really good weapon, but they're not employing it correctly in Monster Hunter because of the, like one thrusting animation like this could be a thrusting devastating killer weapon right really and so there we go those are my thoughts on the long sword specifically now we'll move on to the next one the sword and shield combo in monster hunter this has got some more interesting elements to it than you might consider at face value. We should really ask, why did people use shields historically? Shields are a phenomenal defensive weapon. They were very useful, but not everyone always used them. There are some cases in which shields probably still would have been preferred, but weren't always used. Uh, Self-defense is one of them. Now, granted, if anyone knew that they were going to be waylaid by bandits, uh, even in history, and they knew it ahead of time, they'd probably armor up as much as possible. And they, if they had a shield and no armor, or even they did have armor, they 
very good chances they would still pick them. Shields became less necessary when you could wear really heavy armour. As to the armour in Monster Hunter, yes and no, it depends. <laughs> it's not usually not like there's a big focus on armour. This is the other thing that I think needs to be considered in the Monster Hunter context, and is that would shields be useful in, mo in the world of Monster Hunter? Because we know they were useful I in history. One of the big reasons they were really, you know, used a lot, and this is includes armor or shields, is because of ranged attack arrows, essentially, okay? In reality, no one could actually block incoming arrows with the swords like they do in films. Uh, that's where armor and shields are used. But when arrow fire wasn't needed, and there were things like dueling, and self-defense, with the caveat I already mentioned about self-defense, shields weren't as a higher priority uh, because they didn't no. need to account for arrow fire. Now, you can shield slam hunter, people. There though. are some monsters that have some ranged attacks. And so for those select few monsters, I think, yeah, a shield could be useful if it's large enough. Some of the shields are a bit too small to give you proper cover, especially if you're dealing with like breath attacks, fire and stuff. So if you're fighting a creature, say like the Nagakuga, yeah, a shield would be really useful. In actual fact, the person who's using a shield and sword combo would have a distinct advantage over a lot of the other weapons, including the ones that we've already talked about, like the long sword See? and the great there sword. There you go. Because you can protect yourself. So range attacks, yes, but if you, we would exclude range attacks, which is actually the larger majority of monsters in Monster Hunters where they're more melee, the amount, this is the reality, the amount of insane power that these, and again, it's amazing how survivable, or like, as you as a character, survive hits, bites, attacks, and things from these monsters that in reality should just destroy you, cut you in half, rip you to pieces in but one we're, hit. we're as strong as Hulk, it's fine. Of power and strength behind these things, it would be crazy. But even if we were to give that concession, okay? Why is he dumping on sword and shield, man? Shown in the game what the fuck? That well, the reality is a shield wouldn't protect you that much. I mean, if they show it in the game, you're able to block things with the shield, but I actually think that's not being as true to the level of strength the characters would have and the strength these monsters would have. Uh, if you were dealing with these monsters and you could use these weapons the way that, you know, you have the weight and you can lift them and things, and look, if we could discount the magical elements, and I think being able to block these giant monsters with a shield is a, is a bit of magic right there. So you try and block a big talon no, strike from, we're say, strong. a or something with a shield, uh, it'll just break your arm, knock you, and you go flying anyway, and you'd still probably die. That's the reality. And so if that was the case, the more logical answer would be, screw the shield, give me a weapon, a bigger weapon that gives me higher chances of killing you creatures in one hit. They come into sleep and I can just no! them. Hopefully, maybe cut off that, that big claw or incapacitate or something or just dodge, okay? Dodging is what you no! really want to do in terms of the defense of fighting creatures of this size. And so because of these reasons, no! actually, a sword and shield combo uh, wouldn't be nearly as practical as they show in Monster Hunter if we were to take a more realistic approach to like the concessions this. we've already made. Which is, of course, you can actually lift and use them in a similar way. actually kind said of throw way. the and shield the away. Advantage, the uh, swords that you use in the sword and shield combo are, more, of course, logically, shorter because uh, in reality long side strafe why are you like this so now having said that the one-handed swords in monster hunter are easily as big or even sometimes bigger than the two-handed swords of the real world uh, and that would be probably 10 times heavier because of the width they have on these things so they're still long but the fact that you could get away with using something as big as a great sword or a long sword and the higher damage potential if it would be more realistic you wouldn't be able to defend yourself easily as well as they show in the game with a shield yeah you wouldn't even bother with a sword and shield just go with a bigger weapon. Next classic weapon in the Monster Hunter franchise are the dual blades. And there are different variants of the dual okay. blades. There are like okay. fist variants and sometimes they go, look like Go on, or chill like for the dual blade blades after what you stuff. just said. And then there are Don't ones you are a bit dare. Like, oh. <laughs> 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 so many people love those too. Like <laughs> oh, gosh. Get away. Get it, take it away. <laughs> oh, <laughs> crap. <laughs> All right, the dual blades. Uh, a lot of the disadvantages actually kind of apply with what I was talking about, the sword and shield. Less damage, less reach. Just because you can do two cuts, not really going to help you out that much. I mean, dueling, dual blades, their main advantage are, funnily enough, in dueling itself. When you're fighting a regular opponent, you can now block with one, attack with another, block with... But remember, like, in reality, 
how much could you actually block against creatures this big? You're not going to block, you know, and that's the big advantage of dual blades. Block and attack, block and, oh, and the double attack? I actually think the smaller size of these dual blades means that they wouldn't just do, like, because you would think, you know, maybe the two cuts combined could perhaps do as much damage as a single cut of one of these larger weapons, like the longsword or greatsword. No, I actually think they would penetrate maybe a tenth as uh, great with just, because they, they much They don't smaller, have the penetration. Two, one, one of these. Even, they look even smaller in some cases of the sword and shield ones. They are way too small to do the level of damage you want to do against they huge creatures. They just can't penetrate. Uh, less penetration. And remember how I was saying how cuts usually do less damage than thrusts, especially superficial ones? That's what I'm seeing with these two. He's going to love the lands. Do superficial cuts, but nothing deep enough and, and large enough, wide enough, to really incapacitate the size of some of these creatures. And so the dual blades are a bit of a... I don't think they're an effective That's weapon against That's a good point, MHK, but what if they really were made of fire, no, Shad? Not, and, Actually, fire and would be a disadvantage because like, it would just yeah, scar. <sighs> the mosses would just <sighs> scar. Okay, uh, so yeah, I think the dual blades are a bit of a, a miss. Uh, not not very effective. And remember, I'm not really considering the magic you can do it. Sorry, the demon mode you can do with dual blades uh, and you can uh, fight without losing stamina and the big spinny attacks and stuff. Even like you can do this big spinny attack with a lot of superficial cuts. I mean, to take down these creatures, you need to cause massive blood loss. And I don't think superficial, like to, to do that, you need to cut deeply, hopefully hit arteries or something like that, vital organs. So thrusting really deeply or cutting really deeply. And again, I just, I don't see it with these little, little when I say little, they're about, this, they're about as big as normal arming swords, but that's heavier, wider. So in the real world, it could be really good. But you're not dueling with these monsters, okay? And so you're not getting the main advantage you get out of dueling usually. DB's in the all real surface world. level and damage then, and real uh, penetration. You're not doing nearly as much damage as <laughs> other weapons. So don't like them, I have to say. The next we Interestingly enough, I believe that on World, Dual Blades has some of the best. Uh, actually, let, let's see what's the tier list in World right now. Tier list. Iceborne. Weapon tier list, Iceborne. Game Rant? No, I'd like one. Is the Game Rant one good? Or is it going to be, like, laughable? Usually these websites don't necessarily do a good job. April 24th, S tier. Greatsword, Heavy, Bowgun, and Bow. Dual blades, hammer, switch axe. Ah, actually, it's it's not. It it actually looks pretty accurate. Yep. I think the charge blade may be a little bit higher. Gun lance looking terrible. Where's the dual blades again? It's an A, right? Yeah. Top of A. I don't think great sword is S tier, really. I don't know about that. Heavy bow gun, bow, great sword, light bow gun, dual blades, sword and shield. This actually looks this actually looks correct. Lance at the last though? Interesting. So yeah, dual blades is number five. This is really good. <laughs> Weapon, the lance, baby. Now, d can you guess why I, I like this already? Well, I, I touched on it a little bit. You like with penetrating. The, the longsword segment. Why? Thrusting, deep penetration right into the heart, okay? And remember, thrusts are usually more lethal than cuts because you can hit vital organs, especially on the torso. And so, so far, like if I was to actually say what would be the most devastating weapon, the lance kind of, because the lance specifically, the Monster Hunter one, the length on this thing is just great. Now, when it's you're wearing it, it kind of de it detracts, it's small. And, and when you whip it out, it just grows really big all of a sudden and you can thrust at all your enemies. And so, and the thing is about this is that as a primary thrusting weapon, okay, this is really focusing in on that. And so, in my opinion, <laughs> might be one of the more lethal ones. It's a bit tougher like this. The great sword could do such 
insane cuts. And there's an advantage that cuts have over thrusts, and that is, again, when you swing, you have a very wide area of threat, okay? You can damage everything in this, uh, that whole area, and you can also do big wide swings to help defend yourself, ward off opponent stuff, and the monsters, they could be a bit skittish sometimes, and if you do these big swings, it can try and put them at bay. But then you can kind of thrust at them as well, but it is easier to hit an opponent with a wide cut than it is with a thrust. Think about that. When you do a big... And see... This is why the Lance in Rise is worse than the Lance in World. Because you have that stupid charge sweep that goes sideways. Who the fuck sweeps a Lance sideways? What's wrong with you? Like, come on, man. This is why it's not good in Rise. There you go big wide cuts, you actually are offending an entire plane, okay? And so if we were to look at this whole axis, anything along this axis, wherever they are, the big wide cut can still hit someone who was there or standing there. Thrust is completely different. You do a thrust, and if they were standing there, they, you would have missed. <laughs> That's the thing. Thrusts are harder to land a really good hit. But if you're trained, and we can assume that the Monster Hunter people are very well trained, this is a very lethal weapon. Now think about this, there is some historical precedent to it, because one of the really lethal weapons of the past was the Lance from on horseback, and they would go boar hunting with it, and so it's kind of a beast, and it keeps you at bay, keeps you safer, and uh, very deadly, you can do it with speed. The odd thing about the Lance is that it has a shield with it as well. And I think the shield is hey. about as same usefulness as the sword and shield combat. You don't really need it. And in actual fact, if you could free up that hand to put two hands on the Lance and get away with an even longer Lance than what they have, that would increase its offensive capacity even more so. And so I think that would actually be the more logical out. Forget the shield, two-handed Lance that just this, is This crazy. shield, hey, that dude. That would be awesome. Oh, and so that's what I think would actually happen if you're being a bit more realistic or if you were to try and make these weapons as practical and useful as possible, that would be the ultimate evolution. Get rid of the shield, make the lance just even longer. Stop! But just, even with the shield- just, just stop! Just stop dumping on shields! God, please! Good God! Just like, just like completely taking a dump on shields! In, it's still quite long, uh, long enough, and uh, its advantage for focusing on thrusting is wonderful. Now, of course, being Monster Hunter, they like to take it a step further. We saw with the, uh, you know, great sword that had like a rocket propelled one. Well, with the lance, sometimes there are like drill head lances that have these giant toothy more things that spin kind of like a massive bore drill or something like that it just drills and drips into oh oh it's vicious and i love it this is crazy over the top ridiculous i think it's brilliant uh yeah so lance give a thumb up to the lance not to the shield get rid of the shield but the lance yes Stop! the next weapon is the hammer and this one <laughs> uh, this is the interesting thing about it. You could assume that the greatsword weighs about as much as the hammer. The hammer just kind of concentrates the weight on a smaller area, but that means it's mainly doing superficial surface damage, no deep penetrating cuts or anything like that. And in reality, the hammer, even of the like if we look at the size of the hammer and the size of the sword, like the greatsword, the hammer would do vastly less damage than the sword. Would it crack bone? Of course it would crack bone. If you hit, you know, on these monsters to the side, you could crack the rib, but compare it. You get a good solid hit with this hammer to the side rib cage of one of these monsters compared to the same hit with the greatsword. The greatsword has potential of nearly cutting that creature in half, where the hammer, you'll shatter some ribs, maybe internally, but like just less damage overall. And so, uh, like, cause this is the thing, hammer, one of these 88 dislikes was Ryozu. These are great, and historically they were great for this reason, because of concussive damage, getting through armor, and specifically cracking skulls. They had just insane weight and focused that weight to such a fine area. But there's a difference between the historical context and the Monster Hunter context, and it's that in the historical context, to focus such a high amount of weight in a small area, hammers were optimally designed to do that, because swords are very thin. The actual striking ends were light and they don't have much mass. They relied on the really sharp edge to focus it to be able to cut deeply but now we, let's go to the monster hunter world the swords like especially the great sword easily look as heavy as the hammers and so even if you hit like a particularly okay okay he's a great sword stan okay he, he's just too much into great swords he's like nah man big damage big numbers that's what he's 
this this pause was great it's like he's looking at me he's like what do you mean no i'm not <laughs> armor kind of head on one of these creatures with the great sword you're still going to do probably as much concussive damage through it as if you hit it with the hammer. And so the, the greatsword is essentially a hammer as well as being an insane cutting cleaver on top of it. And the hammer is just a hammer. And so I think the size and weight of the greatsword basically nullifies the hammer's main advantages completely because you get all those advantages of the Rios is going to get upset. You don't get the other advantages of the cutting capacity of the greatsword of the hammer. And so I think because of that, that makes the hammer mostly useless well it's not useless of course you know if you had nothing a hammer is better than nothing but because if you had a choice between the hammer and the great sword like if you if anyone was approaching this really logically what you could uh, what, what would naturally result in being able to use these weapons i don't think anyone would pick the hammer the next weapon we'll look at is the insect glaive and i'm a little bit conflicted <laughs> about it because one of the main utilities of the insect glaive is essentially oh, is a gonna magical ability uh, but <laughs> you can say no it's using the creatures in the world because you have this insect can fly out grab monster essence and it comes back and it helps you charge up something it's in the staff that gives good. you more aerial ability because with the insect glaive you're actually almost able to kind of jump in the air but we could do a bit of a hand wave and say the insect glaive has some type of, I don't know, insect -y ability to, to fly in some cases, and you're able to use that as a point of leverage in the air to propel yourself even further. And so if that was the case, let's pretend that this isn't magic, it's a natural byproduct of the creatures in the world, and it's the insect blade actually is somewhat kind of like a living creature. It makes sense, insect glaive, eh, insect. Uh, and if that was the case, we can try and go with it. And then the main benefit of it is the, its main benefit in the game. It's greater mobility. Would it actually be a devastating weapon? Well, it's a bit of a spear, okay? You can certainly thrust. You can penetrate though, from with it. from size and mass, in comparison to the mass of some of these other weapons, like the lance, the, like the longsword or greatsword, its damage capacity wouldn't, wouldn't nearly be, not even as half as good as some of these larger weapons. But I mean, but I mean, think about it like, it, considering what he was talking about earlier, right? About the, the thrusting, the penetration, all of that. Considering that with this weapon, you can basically fly, you'd be able to go into the air and then just like plunge into the monster's head. Wouldn't that just like fuck it up? Because you use your own weight. You use your own character weight to just like stab. My opinion and uh, so the insect glaive's main advantage i think would be if you were to look at this more practically would be a defensive advantage because it can keep you more mobile and one of the best defenses against these giant monsters is moving out of the way because i don't think you should really be able to block these strikes or attacks okay from dude can, can you stop so with the shield hate advantage and then if it can get you in a good position to strike at a really vulnerable area like an eye or something like that that could then help you know mitigate the negatives that comes with it which would be it's uh, lower damage potential. I think it would not be able to hit nearly as hard as the other weapons, but it's hard to really quantify because, uh, you know, how valuable is this greater mobility? It could keep you alive, and so it's a, it's a bit of a toss-up there. I think uh, it certainly has its place then because there might be certain monsters absolutely where you really want to be mobile, and any other weapon you'd just die with it, and so the Insect Blade would then have a really <laughs> prominent role with. He doesn't and like Karen. It can do damage, can it, not as much as these other big ones, but they can do enough damage. Next weapon, personal favorite of mine, the bow. I like archery. I like to shoot medieval war bow. hundred pounds. Okay, dude. All right. Yeah, sure. Oh, my bow. Oh, but the bow makes sense. Look at how big that is. Come on. Who can draw that? Nobody. Look at the, the arrow is a spear. Come on. Myself. And so, of course, I very much love the bow. Now, in the Monster Hunter context, okay, I think this would probably be the prime go-to weapon out of no. any other weapon. 
Be- no, because because of monster armor, though. You're not. I mean, how are you going to penetrate the monster armor with a bow? Come on, dude. You can't do that. That's not realistic at all. Just just look at the the armor on some of these monsters. How's that fair? Bo shoots spears. <laughs> In orders of magnitude, almost, in reality. If you can kill these giant monsters at a distance before they can get to you and threaten you, you would always go with it. And there is something really cool and, you know, different to these bows compared to the bows that exist in the real world, and that's their insane size. I love it. I think it's brilliant. Like, these are portable ballistas, almost. You are shooting lances, like these huge, you're shooting spears, right, uh, at these monsters. And depending on how strong the monster's hide is, because there are some scaly monsters that perhaps these arrows wouldn't be able to penetrate, and that means you need something of insane force, like the great sword or the lance or something like that. That's where you might be forced to get closer to really break through the hide. But any other monster that doesn't have, like, insanely strong bone hide scales or whatever, this weapon would be the prime weapon in my opinion. Take him out from a distance, giant lance thing shooting, and I mean, they also have a utility that they can coat their quote unquote arrows, they're not arrows, they're lances basically, uh, spears, right, with poisons and other things, and so again, absolutely, that's the strategy, keep yourself safe, keep yourself at a distance, kill the scalies, uh, you know, without them le- allowing them to get Did close. the Monster Hunter team and see this video? Is that why Bo's bow broken? In Monster Hunter is so over the top, I love it, I think it's great. They're like, obviously the characters in Monster Hunter World are stronger than the regular human, they have superhuman strength, combined with the fact that the weapons are as strong as metal and other things, but must be lighter, otherwise, regardless of how strong you are, you would tip over, but because of that superhuman strength, they, we can just accept these people have have the capacity to uh, use these bows, pull them back. This is the thing, right? To uh, shoot the projectiles that the, of the size that they're showing, okay, with the force that they have in the game, that gives us something of uh, that we can make an estimate based upon as to the draw strength of these bows. And we're kind of in the realm of like, gosh, like, I'm thinking at least at minimum 400 pound draw strength, if not 500 pound draw strength in these bows, which is insanity, right? Highest draw strength records that you know we have in you know even from history in the modern days around 200 pounds. Humans, people can draw a 200 pound bow, but that's the upper upper echelon, and only a number of people manage to reach in the modern day. Uh, and of course, there were some people who were able to shoot that level of bow in history as well. That's so like. Uh, that is so high. And granted, the war arrows they shoot are, you know, nice and beefy. But look, again, look at the size of these things on their lances, okay? And so maybe 500 pound draw strength is not even enough. It'd have to be even higher. And so that gives an indication of the superhuman strength these characters must have to be able to shoot them. Uh, just on a side note, look, I started watching the Monster Hunter World movie forgive me okay i do want to finish it sometimes you just need to watch something terrible for the sake of watching terrible but the thing uh, there are sm- it's funny what annoys you it's like not these giant unrealistic monsters the thing that annoyed me when i was watching it at the beginning of the movie you, you do see a guy with a bow and he's got this big monster hunter bow and when he shoots the string the string hits and he goes and it's like bloop, 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 and it's really <laughs> floppy <laughs> <laughs> the thing that annoys, like, if you ever shot real bows, like especially high-powered ones, when you shoot, that string slaps tight so quick, like a big <laughs> and a thwack, and you can feel it, like you feel the vibration when it hits tight, okay? And for the fact that this bow is supposed to be so big, supposed to be able to shoot such large arrows, and the string is so floppy, I was just like, mm. dumb thing to get annoyed with. Annoyed the heck out of me. All right, the next one, light bow gun. I'm a little divided on this. It, it's like sitting in between something like a crossbow and a gun, because it can kind of shoot bullets at times. Uh, okay, so in terms of damage potential, it's a gun. I don't think it could do as much damage as the big bow. Look at the size of the big bow. Look at the size of the arrows it shoots and things. But if this thing is more like a gun, I mean, guns are of course much smaller. So I, I, it's hard for me to make a call on. If it was only shooting or, you know, propelling things to the strength of the bow that we see on it, uh, they would be hitting with much less force. And that would, to me, indicate you would only want to use it against smaller game. If you're trying to use it against much, much bigger things, uh, nowhere near as good as the big bow. Unless, of course, this is more like a firearm, like, you know, ballistic 
damage. And then that changes the game completely because if it's you're more like a grenade launcher projectiles, well, they're of course hit with much more power than even a lance launched from a bow, which would make it a very effective weapon. So it's hard to I guess call. he doesn't but play bow kind guns. Of he doesn't fixed know when we about get to sticky. heavy bow gun because is this like a bow crossbow or is it a firearm? It very much looks like a firearm in some images, and we don't really know if it's relying on the bow itself to shoot. But if we could equate that that the bow on the heavy it's bow got gun explosive is as powerful damage. as the actual bow that you it's a rocket using, launcher. Well, then yeah, the heavy bow gun is the equivalent of a like rocket a high launcher, powered, high caliber firearm yeah. ballistic thing in the Monster Hunter universe, and that would be very useful you get all the advantages i kind of talked it's, about it's it's a 50 cal it even makes the same and, sound uh, <laughs> very high powered stuff with it so i get I, I like i don't really like the light bow gun but heavy bow gun yeah i think that would be quite useful i mean look it actually shows bullets that's that actually it's those are bullets okay so to me that indicates yeah. that sometimes it's not using the bow to propel with the wyvern heart it's actually using <laughs> ballistic technology chemical technology you know gun powder and stuff to propel the giant bullets and uh, so I think big oh, big bullets against the creatures, useful. Yeah. And if you're wondering if firearm technology exists in the Monster Hunter universe, well, I think you would be contradicted by the fact that the gun lance exists. Now the gun lance. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, okay. This almost nullifies the utility of the lance because, if, like, think about it. <laughs> Realistically, even though the moves. Hey it nullifies the existence of the lands. <laughs> Straight up. There you go. All of those lance mains that like to be like, oh, my weapon, this, my weapon. The gun lance nullifies the existence of the lands. Boom, baby. Sets are different with the lance compared to the gun lance. If you actually were able to hold a gun lance and it has this big blade on the end, you should be able to technically do as much attacks, like thrusting attacks with the gun lance as you could with a normal lance. And then it's also a massive gun as well. Now, odd thing is, um, with the gun lance, it seems like the actual gun shots, the projectile shots of the lance, don't have that greater range. No, it's a shotgun. That's not really how firearms work. You know, if you can propel something of such power with this level of range, you should technically still move in that direction with great power for a very long distance. <laughs> yes, exactly. Listen, listen, Ryozu, listen to this man, okay? You need to triple the range of gun lances, okay? It's perfectly balanced. It's perfectly fine. Don't even worry about it, okay? Just triple it. Just triple it. Just, just make the projectile go further. You know, there you go. Yeah, I, you know, and so if we were to look at it more realistically, those projectiles should be have more range, simply put. And if, especially with that utility on top of the fact that it is still a lance, this is like really, I, if we were to say, you know, do the proper extra extrapolation of this weapon should be able to do this, this, even if the game doesn't allow it, but it should be able to do this, this might be like the best weapon in the game so far. Like, yeah! Uh, you've got projectile, <laughs> ballistic fire, and you have deep penetrating, long range lance. It's a crazy weapon. And uh, like, really, the, look at the size of this gun, okay? The reality is ballistic technology trumps bow technology, okay? <laughs> and so <laughs> if you have a bow versus gun, the gun really should always win. And uh, <laughs> raises the fun, interesting question. Like, listen, listen, if you have the bow, the gun should always win. Ryozu, nerf bows, Buff gun lances, boom done. Boom done. The gun should always win. Fuck the bows. Are the bows still used? If, uh, you know, there are gun technology, you could say, yeah, maybe to deliver poisons or whatnot. Um, uh, still, ah, uh, the gun lance. I think that's the, that's the winner so far. Because uh, all the events I talked about, the lance, plus a big massive cannon. Interestingly enough, you could try and say there is kind of a historical equivalent to the gun lance, and that is the really long musket firearms that have bayonets attached to them. Because when you have such a weapon like that, it's not a sword, okay? It's more like a spear or a lance that's also a gun. Long bored rifles that have like, you know, long barrels on them, like the old muskets, with a bayonet. That is essentially a gun lance. Historical equivalence, there you go.
Now going on to the next weapon on the list, and that is the Switch Axe. And this is one, another weapon that I'm a little conflicted on because its main operation is kind of around a magic thing where you hit with the axe, which builds up energy of some type, and then you switch it, which folds, like there's a back blade, which folds on top of the uh, axe if blade, turns it into a sword, so comes down, you can use it like a sword, and, and that unleashes all the Valorous, energy. thank you very much for so, becoming if you're in the Monster Hunter world, like, I don't see a logical hat. through line Appreciate why support. you need a weapon of this design to use that ability, like why can't other weapons store energy and then release them, and so I'm not really sold on, it makes logical sense that you need a switch axe to be able to use that utility, and then if we just analyze the weapon as is like uh, an axe that can turn into a sword you basically have a, an axe that is not as good as the main axes in the game or a sword that is not as good as the main sword in the game and switching between the two doesn't really give you massive advantage you would be better served by doing a dedicated big sword or a dedicated big axe and not having one that is an imperfect version of <laughs> either uh, and so I, I don't really dump like it. But that chances. is, of course, taking out the magical component that you can do just with it. Just took a dump uh, on Switch and, Axes. And again, the other thing is, like, the axe isn't as big as, the, like, the size of weapons you can get. And these giant weapons would be able to hit with so much more force than the sword version or the axe version of the Switch Axe, which, again, makes it a less efficient weapon for this universe, in my opinion. I'm, I'm not a fan. So while we are on the topic of transforming weapons, we get to the charge blade. This design oh, here is we fun go. and inventive. And don't get me wrong, even the switch axe was fun and inventive. I kind of liked how they had the design there. And this one is also kind of fun where you have a sword and shield, but you can attach the shield to the sword and then it moves up the blade of the sword and the shield becomes an axe head. <laughs> That's kind of fun. Uh, the thing to determine how practical this would be would be to ask the question, is that really needed? One, I don't think shields would be that effective in the Monster Hunter world, so you wouldn't really- Stop with the shield hate, dude, come on! Jesus, he just, not, he will not let it go! He just, like, I, this guy just has an agenda against shields, and I just, like, I don't know if, it's like, you know what Shepard said in, in the podcast that the PS4 was Gaijin's paralysis demon? Like, a shield is his paralysis demon, dude. Like, at one point, he, like, suffered from sleep paralysis, and he had, like, a, sh a shield decorating on his wall, and that shield, like, transformed into a demon, and he's just have this, he just has a hate boner for shields ever since. I'm, I'm joking, obviously, but good God, the shield hate is real. Really need a shield. And it seems like, by the context of this weapon, is that when you attach the shield to the sword, you can do more damage with it. Essentially becomes a more efficient weapon. And if you can do that, why not just make a big axe that's like that weapon without the shield so you can use it all the time with the advantages that it gives being able to do far more damage because again, I think- Just, just make a big axe. Don't worry, if, don't worry about the charge, but just make a big axe. Shield wouldn't really have a prominent use in the Monster Hunter world unless you are fighting against monsters that are shooting big barbs at you and you need some type of defense against ranged attacks. So that's really my take on it. Uh, and uh, I don't see too much of a point, unfortunately. It is cool. I love the design, though. Now, this is the weird thing about the Monster Hunter world. There are actually no giant axes in the game. You have a big giant two-handed sword. There's no real big giant two-handed axe. And the Switchblade kind of fits that role of the big two-handed axe, except it's not permanently a big two-handed axe. And I think, like I said, just more logically, just give him a big two-handed axe. Problem solved. The problem is, though, is that I think a big two-handed axe would not be as good a weapon as the giant great sword <laughs> in this game because of the cutting ratio. Remember how I said that? Big every, everything goes back to the great sword, dude. <laughs> Literally everything goes back to the great... He's like, yeah, this weapon's all right. But listen, let me tell you about the great sword, though. Yeah, this weapon's... A, but listen, the great sword, though? He's like, yeah, the, this weapon, you know, the, the bow gun. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. But the great sword, though, is like... <laughs> ratio on those big swords gives it a big advantage over say even a big <laughs> axe and so because of that if you had the choice you would always go big giant great sword and so perhaps that's why they don't have the axe but if they don't have the axe for that reason why they have the switch blade you know no i i, I, I it just comes when i'm thinking about it logically as logically as i can at least i just don't see much use for it when you have these other weapons available now we come to the last weapon which very well like i think not even very it is easily the most ridiculous weapon in the Monster Hunter arsenal. What and that is, is the hunting horn, which is like <laughs> a giant 
bag. Hey! Hey! <laughs> Hey man, morale is important. What do you mean? <laughs> A pipe slash guitar club thing. It's so <laughs> ridiculous and dumb. But, okay. Oh and one my of the main God. uses of this is like you can play music with it to buff your allies. Okay, like again, I think that's a bit of a magical use out of it as a weapon by itself as a weapon. Oh, so, so dumb. I get it, it's for fun and they know it and they're just going with it. But even as a practical weapon, okay, it wouldn't be as good a club as like the hammer, all right? The hammer actually has a thing and the hammer wouldn't be as good as the great sword. And so if you had the choices... <laughs> I can't believe it went back to the great sword again, dude. He's <laughs> like, listen, the hunting horn would not be as good as the hammer, and the hammer's not as good as the great sword. <laughs> and you didn't get the benefit of the music thing. Yeah, you can't see anybody picking it. It's so weird and dumb. But, okay, you know, to play music now, I... It's hard to figure out what technology they have in the Monster Hunter, or like ballistics, uh, but if anyone comes up with a portable music player, that, that can buff and render the thing. Can't someone just sing? Sing nicely? <laughs> they don't really need the music accompaniment. Just sing! They, they've got a nice melodic voice and, uh, and they need a, just a good weapon. Why can't you just uh, so, sing? Yeah, um, i got to say this one's a ridiculous... I've, all the weapons are ridiculous, but even this one in the Monster Hunter world is like next level ridiculous. And it just makes me chuckle because it's Monsanto. It's Monsanto, right? Which kind of is a good way to round off this uh, video, analyzing the classic main weapons of the Monster Hunter franchise. And uh, overall, I think it's great. I love them. They're over the top. And interestingly enough, even if we were to give the concessions that we have, you know, from the beginning of this video, we can see which weapons would be more practical and useful compared to other weapons which is really cool, and I find it a lot of fun. I hope you have as well. Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed. And, of course, I hope to see you on the next video here on Shadowversity. So until that time, farewell. This video was awesome, dude. This is really, really cool. Well, I guess, no, I exaggerated my reaction to some of this. I don't actually care that he doesn't like shields. It's whatever. It doesn't really matter. But, uh, listen, guys, make sure to leave a like on this video because this video is awesome. This video is very, very, very awesome. So make sure to, to leave a like on there. And of course, it's like we, we got to the important conclusion, which is that Gun Lance would be the best weapon in Monster Hunter. It's that simple because it's a gun. <laughs> there you go. No, just, like, just, hit, just go in there, hit that like button. That's all that really matters. It's a gun. You just, you just use the Gun Lance, regardless of the shield bashing and all that. But it's, it's really, really cool. To actually get like a, a perspective from someone who knows about medieval weapons. I think it's interesting. Uh, even though, of course, there were like a 60 or so uh, bowgun users that were very offended. And then probably 20 or so hunting horn users that were also offended. Let's <laughs> get rid of the shield. No, don't get rid of the shield. Shield is important. I think you just need to take into consideration the strength of hunters because hunters are strong because i mean if you're taking the because like here's the thing right and uh, this is just a, a little bit of, of my own analysis on this like if you take into consideration that someone has enough strength to swing a great sword right <clears throat> just taking it just taking some of his own examples if someone has enough strength to actually swing the great sword wouldn't they be strong enough to actually hold one of the big shields and block attacks? Like, sure, the sword and shield one, the shield from the sword and shield, is just too tiny. It's just very small and it's not good enough. But the shield from the lance and the gun lance, I think you should actually be able to block. Like, if you're strong enough to swing that big-ass sword, why wouldn't you be strong enough to just block with a shield, right? But, uh, yeah, you know. I think it's a really, really, really fun video. So make sure to leave this guy, Shadowversity, a like. He's really cool. Really, really cool. Really, really, really enjoyed it. Really, really, really enjoyed it.